this works. Maybe, hopefully. Okay. Hello, guys. This is Dragonheart06. For the first time, I think, speaking to you in. on face. At face value. I'm sorry, my brain is fried. And I am going to do a little list for you guys with me actually recording myself. The main reason being that I am unbelievably bored right now. We are moving and packing, and my room is a, literally a room full of boxes at the moment. I just got back from London this morning, and I don't want to travel anymore, so I have nothing better to do. And I thought it'd be fun to do another little list after seeing how popular the 10 saddest moments, musical moments, after like a year, it's become my highest watch video, which is insane. Even though most of the comments include people like, this should have been, whatever. But it would be fun to just do a fun little nonsens nonsensical list. And if any of you are offended by what I say, I'm sorry. I'm just bored and I'm having fun. And I'm going to have a Disney marathon with my friends in a couple days. So I thought that would be fun to just get this warmed up for me. Um, and I'll put on a little Disney music in the background, because I'm awesome like that. Um, with this one. Hopefully it's not too loud. Yay, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the Disney movies that were at least part of my childhood, and I'm going to rate their leaving heroine and hero based on the scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the best, 1 being the lowest. lowest. This is going to be a response video to, um, sorry, Melina and Steph's Rate the Disney Prince and Princesses, but I'm going to extend mine to he heroines and heroines and heroes, because well, I actually don't like many of the Disney princesses themselves, as you will see in my list. And I'm going to go through each film in chronological order, starting with I'm, I'm going to lump just starting with, um, you know the first three princes from the film, prince, princes from the film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the prince from that, the prince from, Prince Charming from Cinderella, and, um, Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty. I'm just going to give them all a two, because they are so bland, and they're so boring, and they have... They're so typical, and they're too perfect. Who likes a guy? Who wants a guy who's perfect? It, that's absolutely no fun at all. What's, where's the excitement if your guy's perfect? There's nothing There's nothing there. There's no romance. It's, they're so bland and so boring, and they save the princess's life. I take that back. Only the first, only Snow White's prince actually does save them. All right. Only Prince Charming doesn't save Cinderella's life, but they all are very typical and male dominant. Oh, I am powerful. Ooh, I shall save the woman and get a trophy wife. So I'm giving them all a two because they are so bland and their facial express expressions are so boring. Have you noticed that? Like Prince Charming, I realized that once I was watching the film. He looks so bland and boring and ugh. He looks like Ken. He looks like a Barbie doll. All right, moving on. Um, the princesses. I'm gonna give. Both Snow White and Snow White and Cinderella, I'm giving them both a three because it's the same deal with the princesses. They have nothing beyond their pretty faces, pretty much. I will give Sleeping Beauty a three because she has a pretty song. She has a pretty singing voice. That's pretty much the only reason I'm giving her this three because I love Once Upon a Dream too much as a song. But yeah. Moving away from those pre-50s, those terrible 50 movies that... Mm. What else do we have? Cinderella, um... There isn't really a hero for Alice in Wonderland, it's there from the 1950s. But as a heroine, I would actually give her a 6. Because Alice, she's a really fun character to watch through her journeys through on. Disney's version, she is pretty headstrong for a woman of the Victorian era, and she has dreams, and I think many girls can relate to having a world of their own, and 
wanting to escape from the world. And the nice thing about Alice is that she doesn't have dreams of, unlike every other Disney character, she doesn't have dreams of finding a man. That's not her dreams at all. She's only a little girl. She wants her own little fanciful world, and she falls into that. And she's... And considering all that she has to go through, I think she comes out pretty independent for a Victorian woman, I'm just saying. Not like Disney, the new Disney Alice, where she's just like, independence be before it was possible to be that independent. She's independent for an, a young, a very young Victorian woman. And for that, I would give her a, a six. And she's, and she's just fun to watch also. Um, Peter Pan. I haven't watched that film in a while. Wendy was slightly more annoying than Peter, so I'm going to give her four. She's, unlike Alice, there's nothing really interesting about her. She's pretty much molded to be the perfect high society woman, and there's nothing really interesting about her, so I'm going to give her four. Peter Pan, I'm going to give him... A six, because he is fun, and he is cute, but he can be kind of an ass sometimes. He, there's only a few points of the film where I find that he actually redeemed himself, where he saved Wendy and had to get over his childish stubbornness, which I guess I like. But he's so... he can be really mean sometimes, so for that I'm going to keep him in that range. Um, what else do we got? Robin Hood. I haven't seen that movie in forever, so I'm not sure how to rate that. I don't even remember the lead actress's name. Um, oh god, now we're getting into the Disney Renaissance, and of course, being the leading lady of the Disney Renaissance is the Little Mermaid. Now, I am glad that the Little Mermaid existed just because it created the Disney Renaissance, but apart from that, not that good to me well, when it comes to characters. Prince Eric, I'm going to give him a five? No, a four. I'm going to give him a four because he's so boring. He's only slightly less boring than the original princess. He's so boring. It's just kind of amusing to laugh at him sometimes. That's the only reason I'm giving him that a rating because he's, he's just funny to laugh at sometimes because he's so... He is Ken. He is Ken also. And Ariel. One. I'm giving her a one. Because I know a lot of people are going to slay me for this, but I absolutely hate Ariel. I really, really hate her. I don't know why women look up to her and think, well, little girl's fine. Look up to her and see a role model and see a woman they want to be because she's so, she's such a bad role model. Pretty much her whole story is saying, Hey, I met this guy. He looks pretty, so I'm going to sacrifice everything, my whole family, my whole royal position, my life, so I can be with him. That doesn't seem like a very good moral for children, does it? I don't think it does, no. And she's also also very, very annoying. Also, she's very prissy, and she she's spoiled. She's a spoiled brat, and that's what really gets her into trouble. And I sympathize more with King Triton than with Ariel, seriously, through the entire film. He has to go through some shit dealing with that daughter. And she's just annoying, and she can't save herself. Sure, she saves Eric for once, but that's because she can swim. She's a mermaid. But she has to be saved by Eric in the end. And what should she get out of it? She gets to, she gets to get married and have a boring, bland wife and has, have a kid that also screws up shit as much as she did when she was a kid. So, she's a one for me. She's an absolutely terrible example for children, I think. 